Praise the Lord. Tonight, today, this morning, this was tonight's service, it's tonight, today's service. Uh, we're going to go uh, to Joshua 24. We're also going to go to Psalm 91. We're going to go there first, Psalm 91, okay? Um, history. History is, uh, is very important. By the way, I said that wrong. Dan, you're not the monkeys. Because, because um, God put you two together. It wasn't luck. You know what I mean? A good marriage is made in heaven. God puts two people together. So I, I just put think about that. I said that all wrong. There's no, there's no luck in this. God put you together. Now, um, <clears throat> history is an important thing. Today we see people disrespecting history. People don't want us to have a history. You go into other parts of the world, uh, when it's a takeover, they burn the more, more, you know, hide the monuments, take them all away. I remember running, uh, where, what, jogging in, in a place which used to be behind the Iron Curtain and seeing uh, a big, a big uh, like a, it's a pocket, like a big fence around it. And they have all the, the, the uh, this, this was in Hungary. There you see all the, the, the um, uh, statues of you know, Lenin and all these people and Stalin, and they're all, they're all hidden away, you know, put in a dump, really, basically it's a dump. You know, get, rid of, get rid of all that history. We don't, wanna, we don't want any more of that communist history. Get rid of it, we are no longer communists. You know, we're, we're free. And uh, when a communist uh, come in, or a, uh, a uh, ISIS comes in, what do they do? They destroy the history. Far back as they can, any history they can, they get rid of it. New day, something new, something brand new. That's what they want, something brand new. Kill the old. In America today, there's a movement to kill the history, get rid of our history, disrespect, uh, you know, all of our uh, our heroes. They started out with the Southern heroes, but now they're up to um, Lincoln. <laughs> you know, they're up, they're up, you know, we're, we're they're right up to the to the modern day. Get rid of those statues. Get rid of the history. All of our history before now was, was bad, you know. And now we have a new history. And, 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 and never mind the pilgrims of 1620, we have to go back before that, you know, and, uh, and bring out the words when slavery came in and, and just disrespect the country and, and make our young people grow up not loving America. And even hating America and who they are. And so it's a real shame that what's going on. Now, as we go to Joshua 24, we see God re rehashing the history of Israel. And it wasn't all good. History had, some of it was good and some of it was bad. God wanted them to see it all. When, it was, when, when they were living for God, things were good. When they were not living for God, things were not so good. But you know, God, God recants it. I mean, re Recites it. So that's what we say. We're going to get into that in a minute. But let's take a look at what it is to be a righteous person. Now, Psalm 91 or Psalm 100 really, uh, Psalm 100 very concisely really tells us what a righteous man is, a righteous woman is. But in, uh, in Psalm 91, now, uh, it, he, he, he talks about how much he loves us. See, no matter where we are in our history, we have to know that God is working in our lives. Okay? Now in America, I look at the history of America, and I, I know we have some things to be ashamed of. Slavery is one of them. We should be ashamed of that. And, and we look at, as we look at history, we see how God, and it was all over the world. It wasn't just in America. We weren't the, you know, the bad country. They're all like that. And, uh, and then we saw as God worked in, the, worked in America, when, I'll tell you something, as, as America overcome, first we overcame the king, you know, and that kind of slavery, then we, and, then, and then there was a strong sentiment to get rid of slavery, that, that, that our constitution didn't fit all the people, you know, that there were, whole, there were a lot of people that weren't being fairly treated, and, and yet the constitution said differently, and we grew, and, and, and out of the churches, really, came a movement to free the slaves, and when, when the slaves were free, God just blessed America. And, and, and becoming, instead of a, a now we always were, were very blessed because people had come here for religious freedom, to raise their children. Many of them had come to, that's true, to raise their children. And, and they came for freedom. 
raise the children in Christ to be able to give them the, 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 the beliefs that they wanted to give them. In other countries where the, the Bible was, was being, uh, you know, basically burned, you know, and, and along with people. <laughs> people who believed the Bible along with it were being burned, you know. And uh, they came to America for freedom. We have to remember that. And, and God blessed America. You know, during colonial times, the, the, the standard of living of the average person in America was higher than anywhere else in the world. And the, the standard of education was higher than any else, anywhere else in the world. For the common man. Hi, anywhere else, but, uh, you know, a, 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 a father could, could come here and get an education and then could educate his children and bring them to church and teach them the Bible. But when, when we got rid of slavery, the, the country blossomed. And quickly we became a world power and a, and a world leader. And everybody looked to America for what freedom is. And, and, and democracies began to blossom all over the world. We were the example. We were the example of the rest of the world. So, okay, we, we started in slavery. Yeah, but we overcame it. We were the country that overcame it. You know? I remember going into the military. I remember going into the Marine Corps and uh, being told that, uh, that we didn't have any color in the Marine Corps except green. <laughs> Everybody was green. Now, that was way before. I mean, that was civil rights time, you know, because I'm an old man. And uh, you know, civil rights was happening then. And we were all green. That's all it was. And, and that's how our country grew. And, and, and uh, so we have a lot, we, we see God working in America as we, as we worshiped and, and were faithful to God. Uh, our, our church has blossomed. I, I, it's been, people from other countries will say, if you want to d describe what America was like, just and why they're so great, just go and look at the public square. And what do you see dominating the public square? Cathedral, the church. You, know, you go into the countryside, what do you find? Little churches. People are worshiping, they're loving God. That, that's who we are, we're loving God. And God is, is, is making something of us and blessing us and blessing us and blessing us and blessing us. Let's read, read Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Because if you stay close to God, you stay under His feathers, He'll watch over you. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. After World War II, I'm a World War II baby, you know? You know what? Uh, and uh, the, the church is blossomed. The Southern Baptist Convention, I, I think they've doubled after World War II. We're Southern Baptists. It, 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 it just, the Sunday schools grew. The men came back and the women came back from, from the war and and, and they knew that God had, had his hand on them. They had come out of the foxholes. You know, they had come out of the, uh, the, 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 the ships where they were in fear every day of being sunk and, 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 and of dying. And they, they put their full faith and trust in the Lord. And these men and women came back and America was even uh, closer to God for a whole generation. I remember growing up in a town where everybody went to church. I, I really didn't know so my father, anybody who didn't go to church, you know, he eventually did too. You know, I, I really, it, it, it really, uh, it, it never was a question. I didn't wake up in the morning and say, do I go to church today or not? You know, I went. And I was glad to go. And, and, and everybody, everybody loved the Lord. And, and, and I remember we'd be playing baseball and, 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 and it would be a good Friday, you know, and noontime would, would hit and the, the church bells would start to ring and none of us would talk. We all was out for three hours. It's really the way it was growing up. It's really how the, that was my upbringing. You know, I walked, I, I walked by the church, and, you know, with my head, I'd do that when I walked by a church. I was raised that way. You know, that was, and everybody was. When, when I made uh, my, my uh, first communion, everybody at my school, when we made it together. I knew everybody. You know, when I made, uh, 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 the different sacraments, whatever they thought was Catholic. But everybody in the town did. Okay? It was different. And so God blessed the nation. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowl and from the noises, no, noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and, and buckler. I memorize, memorize. Uh, uh, 
things of God. And if, and if you're a Protestant, you memorize scripture. I memorized catechism, but I still got it, you know what I mean? I had never had any question who, as growing up who, who God was, you know? I knew who God was because everybody taught me that. And it was drilled into me. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, not for the arrow that flyeth by day. I deal with, with a generation now. And I hate to say it, but the older generation is backslidden to be the same way. But the generation, how long does it take for a generation to forget how to use a fork or a spoon? Just one generation. And how long does it take to raise up a child, a generation I should say, that does not know God? It's just one generation. That's all. Okay? Just all. And so I'm trying to say, what God is saying here, and he's going to say also, Joshua is going to say, is that, is that, um, that God is active in your life. He's, he's, he's a part of everything. The good and the bad. You know? I remember doing bad things, you know, as a kid. And actually, this is this, actually feeling guilty about it. I just walk away. I felt guilty. It would bother me. Terrible. I did something wrong. I gotta confess. Oh, I want, how can I get this off my conscience, you know? Uh, and, 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 and today people just don't seem to have any conscience about what they do. They take the Lord's name in vain. They don't go to church. They raise up their children to not know God. You talk to somebody in an adult and you say, Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior and the Lord of your life? Yes, I do. I don't see a church. No. What about your children? What about those children? Six, seven, eight years old. You don't bring them to church. You don't bring them to Sunday school. Why? Well, they get mad. They get mad at you to tell them that. But they raise them up not to know God. And then they say they know God. You think God doesn't notice that? That's our history. That's where we're at now. We need to remember. Uh, not for the pestilence. Uh, that walketh in darkness, not for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Now, I'm gonna just going I could go on with this because God keeps talking about how he's, he's watching over his people. Let's go to Joshua chapter 24 because I'm going to run out of time. I'd like to continue on with this. But in Joshua chapter 24, you have a, you have a man who has, he, he grew up in slavery in Egypt. Joshua. He was the general. For Moses. And the day came when Moses was retired by God. And he gave the responsibility of the nation to Joshua, a former slave. It was different. Moses was a prince in Egypt, you know, for 40 years. He was trained in all the best schools. Joshua. Joshua was a slave. And uh, then he was a, he was a general. And he led the people faithfully to, uh, to retake, or to take, excuse me, Canaan, the promised land. And he led the, he was one of the 12 spies. And he was one of the two faithful. He, he and Caleb were faithful. The other 10 were not faithful. He had, he had proved by his life how much he loved God and how, how to stand for God. Even when the whole nation was going wrong, he would stand for God. He had proven it as a young man uh, when he came back and said, let's go in and take the land. Let's, there's giants in the land. There's walled cities in the land. They have chariots. And they're just meat for the taking. Because <laughs> God is with us. He and Caleb, the other ten were cowardly. Oh, we're lost. There's giants in the land. They have walls. They have iron weapons and they have chariots and will be destroyed. Even after God had taken them out of Egypt and drowned Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, they still had no courage. But Joshua was even, he was different than the rest of the people of his generation. He stood for God all of his life. And now it's time for him to retire. Most of the land now is conquered. The, the Israel is safe in the, in the new land. 
And so God directs Joshua. You're the one that can say this. You'll be my spokesman. And so in Joshua chapter 24, this righteous man becomes the voice of the people of God. And so God speaks it, and they go into a valley where, where, where all, the, all the tribes line up in order. And all the leaders of the tribes are called out. They're going to repeat whatever is said. And, and, and Joshua, there's no microphones, yeah. but they're going to hear it all across the valley. Millions, uh, uh, millions of people are going to hear what Joshua has. It's his farewell address. I'm going to die. I lived in Egypt. I lived in the wilderness. I led the conquest. God has been strong in me. Now I have to pass the torch to you, the people. It's the, it's the, if you were the new generation that God chose, the old generation died before the side of die, God kept me alive. But now I must go. I get to go to promised heaven. And so he begins his, his speech. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel and, Sh and, and Shechem and called for the elders of, Is of Israel and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. This is God's words. This is what God is saying. You know, I was telling, I was telling Robert, because he preached last Sunday night. You know, Robert, you realize what you said last night was God's word. You know, you, 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 you were, your task was to say God's word. What I'm saying today doesn't make much difference. It's, it's what God has to say. You know? I told my daughter this morning, because she's a minister too. I told her, I said, you know what? Um, my, my sermon's not all tweaked out, but that's probably a good thing. <laughs> Instead of me, it'll be God speaking. You know, that's the kind of thing. She understands that. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwell on the other side of the flood of old time. And Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nahor, and they served other gods. You see, God doesn't say burn the monuments. God says, doesn't say get rid of the uh, of, of the uh, of your history. I, I got the men together every Sunday. I get every Saturday morning. The men come together. I have a history degree as well as a, you know, a seminary degree. Tim has a history degree. Robert has a history degree. Who else was there? I think I think. Oh, you have a history degree too, don't you? You already got your history. Well, anyway. We had a whole bunch of guys there, all history majors, and, and we're thinking, why is, why is the nation throwing away the history that we learned? It's not the way we learned it, you know? God's not, not, God doesn't, is, is not throwing away history. He wants us to face it. He said, you know, uh, you know after, uh, if God had to destroy the world, had to flood the whole world, why? Because, because you were worshiping other gods. And he goes on to say here, yeah, you, I, I took you out, and, uh, and I gave you Abraham, a righteous man. His father was a worshiper of the moon god. Terah was a worshiper of the moon god. Allah, that's by the way, is the name of the moon god. It's the only name for God in the, in the, in the language now of the, of the, of the, of the uh, Arab. And, uh, and, and they worshiped other gods, you know? And, uh, and yet, again, Abraham was a righteous man. He didn't go the way of the culture. He didn't go the way of everybody else. That's why God chose him out to be the father of the Israelites, of a new nation, a new people. But he was also going to be a blessing to all the nations of the world because he was faithful. <laughs> God could use him to bring Christ because Christ is in the line of Abraham. Okay, it comes out of, the, out of Israel. The Messiah would come out of Israel. This, this, this was a man he could use. Abraham, Sarah, they were, they were faithful people. Uh, but he doesn't hide the fact that they were all worshiping strange gods. Now this is, he, they go on, he, he says he, he brought them into Egypt. What did the, why did they, why did God leave them there for 400 years? He brought, he, he, he brought uh, Joseph down into Egypt and, and, and all of this, all the, uh, the 70 people there, you know, and multiplied them. But why did, they needed some tweaking, buddy. And he brought them into a land where they got some tweaking. And the people worshipped the Egyptian gods. Oh, they kept somewhere uh, their God. They kept crying out to God, take us out, God. Why aren't you taking us out of here? 
where we've been enslaved. It was not like it was with Joseph now. We're enslaved in Egypt and they're worshiping the Egyptian gods and they're wondering why God's not hearing their prayers. 400 years they stayed there. God doesn't hide this. You sell them. You worship Egyptian gods. Even when they went out to the wilderness. Remember? Aaron led the people and they built an Egyptian calf and worshiped again the Egyptian god. But God doesn't hide that. God's tweaking us. And what about us in America today? We're saying, oh, it's so it's such an evil world that we live in today. And, 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 they, and, and, and some of us are saying, oh, there was an election stolen, those Democrats. But guess what? There are a whole lot of Republicans doing, the, doing it too. The governor of, uh, of Georgia is a Republican and the Attorney General is Republican. So it's not just a party, it's a people. The leadership of America is a reflection of who we are. Joshua is calling the, the Israelites and he's saying to them, Stand as I stood, as Joshua stood. Stand for God. Stand for God. He goes through the history, the history. And then the verse, I'm going to, because of time, I have to jump a little bit. He goes to 14. And behold, this day, I, uh, I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the wrong place. Uh, and now, therefore, fear the Lord, he says. And sir, so after he goes through all this history, I can give it all to you. But in 14, he says, and, 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 and now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Remember your parents, they could not enter into the promised land. They all had to die in the wilderness. God has chosen you out, brought you out, a new generation. Now, serve God. And they say, oh, yeah, we will. And God says, no, you won't. No, you won't. You can't serve. Look, look at it. He continues on. And it seemed unto you to serve the Lord. Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the God which your fathers served uh, that were on the other side of the flood are the gods of the Amorites in which the land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So first he says to them, they, they, he says, serve the Lord. They say, we will serve. And he says, no, you can't serve. And they say, no, we will serve. We will serve. And, and, and Joshua says, choose. You have to choose. Do you know what the trouble is today? People don't, they say, oh, you ask them. See, before, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 51% of Americans said they were born again. Isn't that what you do when you get born again? Make that choice. You know? Uh, you, you, God wants all of us to be in heaven with Him. We know that. But uh, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. None are righteous, none are one. None seek it after Him. So all, we're all universally sinners. We're all headed for hell. That's what Joshua was looking at the people. He knows their hearts. He knows they have a sinful, lustful spirit. And he also, they also uh, uh, reach out to God. They, they have to make a decision. That's what, that's what it was. And, 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 the, and so, and so well, for us, you and I, Jesus Christ came into the world and gave us a choice. Do we choose uh, that, that thou shalt confess with the mouth of the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead? Do you believe, do you believe in the miracle that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and came back? Or do you doubt it? I think that most people have serious doubts about it. I think in America today, what ha what's happened is we, we just haven't taken that extra step. Ten years ago, 51% of Americans said they were born again. Today, it would be more like 20%. You go down to the Bible Belt. It's not really a Bible Belt. It's not what it was. People aren't flooding the churches like they used. Not even in the Bible Belt. I think that this part of Pennsylvania is the Bible Belt for Pennsylvania, you know. But the churches aren't full like they should be. 
people have been deserting. And, and we have a, a, a generation now that, uh, that are, they're a ruling class that, that really discourage basic Bible-believing Christians. They, they want us to have some kind of a um, religion that doesn't really follow the Bible, that, that the Bible isn't really true. They, they think that people who believe in the errancy of Scripture, people that are pro-life, people that believe that men are born men and women are born women, people that believe in marriage, not living together. Today, th today that's, not, that's not the way. You get married. I love to see people get married. I love it. God wants us to live out his word. We have to make a choice in America. We say, well, things are really tough today. We're really struggling. It's really hard. You ever think that maybe God is allowing us, just like he did when they had to go through the flood, you know, go through the wilderness? God's, God's telling us, uh, make some decisions, America. Didn't, didn't uh, Franklin Graham and all the, the leaders, the religious leaders, I'm talking about true religious leaders, and I'm not talking about any denomination. I'm talking about Christian leaders across America. And, and they were joined by leaders of other faiths as well. Calling America to repent and turn back to God. And we didn't do it. We just had that. Just, this is just, I just lived through that. Just the last few months. And America did not, as a, as a nation, turn back to God. And then we're wondering why things are getting so tough. And we're all afraid. And we're, 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 we're oh, it's, it's the next election will say, oh, this, oh, this will, this will, this. God wants us to hear his word in Joshua. Stand for God. Make a decision that you do believe in the cross. Make a decision that you're going to live for God. That every word of this book is true. You're not going to rip this page out and rip that page out. You're going to believe every single word of the Bible. And uh, that's where God is right now. I believe. Let's, let's believe God. Verse 17 says, uh, Now therefore, fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And he says, As for me and my, and, and my family, we will serve the Lord. How many of you ever put that on the door? As for me and my family, we'll serve the Lord. It's on your checks. It's on your checks? Okay. I'm not, I'm not giving anything new. We, we hear this all the time. As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Well, that's basically what that whole sermon is. That that's what Joshua went through the whole history. And told him there's good and there's bad in the history. But don't, don't turn your back on it. But you personally and with your family, you, you, you raise your family to know God and to follow God and to serve God. And, um, and don't look at the, to the right hand or to the left hand. Don't point fingers at other people. Don't look at, don't, don't, don't look at any man, any political leader, any, relig any, any religious leader. Uh, you and God decide that you will follow him. Father in heaven, I pray that, uh, that you will uh, bring us to decision today. That just as Joshua told the people that, that, that he, God didn't want lukewarm Christianity, he, he didn't want uh, doubt, uh, he didn't want people who were uh, fainting uh, when, when Satan raises his ugly head and the devil uh, uses his wiles, but people who will stand even to the death and follow him. And uh, Lord, uh, I pray that you will uh, help us as, a, as, a, as, a, as individuals in this church, every individual. Even, Lord, I, I call for the church to, to turn and stand for you, but we will. Lord, in every individual in the church to see him fully for God. I pray this in the name of, of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand at the altar. How many of you are ready to stand? Otto, I remember an old sermon that you, because Otto was a pastor. I, 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 I um, somewhere, I, I don't know how I got a copy of yours, but I remember an old sermon that you had, that you had passed out um, a checklist of people when this sermon. Am I right about, about this text? A checklist of people then checked off, they didn't have to give it, they, they, could, they could just, this is a person that they did, but they went down and checked out, yes, I will serve the Lord in every area of their life. Is that right? Yeah. You had them all check it off. Oh, yeah, on New Year's Eve, yeah. This is, I'm, I'm not asking for New Year's resolutions, okay? Because uh, I, I don't keep my resolutions. <laughs> 
My wife told me today, way in the kitchen. She, she told me I was a chicken. Because for one year, she said, you haven't waited for a, a year because you're afraid of what you say. I said, you're right. She said, well, wait in. I said, well, I'll do it next week, at the end of the week. <laughs> I don't keep my resolution. But what I'm saying is, don't make that, super, just like you're saying, you don't, let's not be superficial or anything like that. Let's be sincere, not right with God, you know? Um, you tell God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to drop the drugs. I'm going to drop the uh, misuse of alcohol. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to drop the, 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 the sexual uh, uh, sins that are, that are in my life, and the infidelities that are in my life. Uh, I'm going to tie. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna lie or steal or cheat, and, and I'm, I'm gonna be honest in every area of my life. That's something everyone has to do personally, personally between you and God. These aren't. These aren't. Don't, don't make. Don't make uh, resolutions. Just make commitment. I commit my life to a holy God who remembers. And he will forgive. <coughs> Learn from your mistakes. Don't come to the and fight him over. Learn from your mistakes. And grow from your mistakes. I am not the man I was five years ago. I hope I'm better. I don't know if I am. But I hope I am. I try to learn from my mistakes. That's what history is for. You, 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 you learn from it, and you don't go back there, and you do better. Those, the, our, our historical figures were men of their times, and they did some pretty bad things. When I read uh, the literature of my youth, and the language that was used, I said, I grew up in that, and the way they talked, and the things they said, well, I could I can't, I can't relate to that anymore. I'm a new man. And I hope that's the case. So let's learn from our history. And let's commit to live holy, separated lives to God. Father in heaven, we pray that you would heal our land. Lord, you've always been with us. We, have always, we see ourselves as a nation, as one nation under God. We've agreed upon that for hundreds of years now. And Lord, continue to make us one nation under God. Bless us as a nation. And Lord, join us together again. And let us remember that we are indeed a nation that is founded upon Christian principles. That our Constitution is founded upon the Bible. Upon the Ten Commandments. That's where our laws come from. Lord, that's the basis of it all. We honor you, Lord. And we always have. Bring us back to you. Bring us back to the point where America will once again uh, um, be, uh, as a nation, faithful to you. And we'll give you all the praise and glory for this. We pray for our, our churches. We pray for our families. Watch over us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen.